Hi, everyone. This is Jonathan here from the podcast. August is National Able to Save Month. Able accounts are tax advantaged savings programs designed specifically for individuals with disabilities. And MIFA is the proud provider of the Massachusetts Able program known as Attainable. And so we thought, what better way to, for us to mark this occasion on the MIFA podcast than to highlight a conversation I had last fall with Sarah Lazar from the Banacos Academic Center at Westfield State University. The Banacos Academic Center houses both the state's most sought after college admissions program for students with learning disabilities and ADHD, and also houses a disability support services program for all students. It's a great resource and a great program, and Sarah is amazing. So enjoy this conversation. And if you have questions on the Attainable program, on ABLE programs, or on any facet of planning, saving, and paying for college, please reach out to us. You can do that by email at collegeplanningatmifa.org. You can do that over the phone at 800-449-MIFA. So you can also reach us on social media, on Facebook at MIFAMA, on Twitter at at MIFA tweets and on Instagram at MIFA underscore MA. But now we'll hear a repost of my conversation from last fall with Sarah Lazar on how students with disabilities can prepare for college success. Sarah Lazar has been supporting students academics since 1990 in various capacities, residential life, tutoring, mentoring, disability services, academic advising and academic strategies programs. She's worked in higher education with students with disabilities for over 16 of those years, and since 2012 is the director of the Banacos Academic Center at Westfield State University, which houses the University Tutoring Program, Academic Strategies, Disability Services, and Learning Disabilities Program. Sarah, thank you very much for being here with me. Thank you, Jonathan. Now, we touched a little bit on, and I have to uh, apologize for earlier in the show, I mispronounced Banacos as Banacos, but um, the Banacos Academic Center, why don't I let you explain exactly what it is and, and what you do there? Great. Um, so the Banacos Academic Center is a center for the entire university at uh, Westfield State University. Um, we have over half of the students come and use the center for whatever purpose, whether it be they come and study, whether it be they are a tutor, they're being tutored, they come to an academic strategies program, um, or they're part of one of our disability support programs. But it's, they might even just come and print out a paper. I mean, but at least half of the campus, the students on campus use that, that service. Um, so there are four programs in the Binoculus Academic Center. We have the University Tutoring Program, and the university tutoring program is for all undergraduate students on campus. Um, they receive services free. Uh, they request their tutors and uh, get to set up their own appointments with tutors. Tutoring is really a place for students to ask questions, to learn how to study for that particular course. It's not a session where the students are taught the information again. So it really is a, a student-led service, okay? We have our academic strategies program and our academic strategies program is also for all students on campus. It is also a free service. And what we do is we try to you know, fill in the gaps where students who are, it actually could be a new student, but I find that first years and juniors are usually the people who come to our sessions. And these sessions are to ensure that students know how to do academics in college, how to plan for it, how to prepare for it, how to read for remembering and understanding, how to create their own study guide, how to create effective and useful notes, um, prepare for exams and quizzes, and how to take tests, uh, how to stay on top of their assignments. Uh, we try to be flexible in our sessions and do what students are looking for. And then we also have our experience in what students need to know in order to be an effective college student and to be most successful. Uh, we do have some individualized support for academic strategies, uh, but that is fairly limited. So um, we strongly recommend that students go to the sessions first, and then they might follow up with me or somebody else on individualized needs. 
we have disability services and we have the learning disabilities program. So those two programs work with students who have disabilities. Um, <clears throat> we have about a quarter or more of the students on campus have identified as having a disability, which is a pretty large number, which also means though that the campus is very supportive. Um, the campus has been, they've just learned, they ask questions, the faculty ask questions. Uh, it is probably one of the less stigmatizing places for a student to go to college because it is seen as so normal at Westfield State University for someone to have a disability. So disability services works with any student at any point in time in their academic career, whether it's undergraduate, graduate, if they're auditing a class to make sure that they have accommodations if they have a documented disability. Um, if someone's disability is not documented and that disability is that condition that um, significantly uh, limits a major life activity or substantially limits a major life activity. It could be anything. It could be breathing. It could be um, their gastrointestinal system. It could be a mental health condition. Um, it also includes learning disabilities and ADHD. Um, so it could be anything. So we you know, work with students who don't have documentation to try to help them find the appropriate place to get documentation. We do not do testing at our campus. Um, so that's something just to know. There are schools that do that. And when they have that documentation, we sit down and we talk with them about how their condition affects them and talk about uh, either how it affects their academics or their dining or their housing and work with them to try to find some accommodations that will help them um, you know, be able to perform to their best. That is the, the primary service of disability services. Our access advisor will also talk with people about other resources on campus. She in and of herself is not someone who a student would come and, and sit down and talk about time management with, um, but she would point you in the right direction for that. Uh, we also have our learning disabilities program, which has been around since 1979. It is basically the root of the Binoculars Academic Center. It's how we came about. The learning disabilities program is an admissions-based program which means that when students apply to the university, they also apply to the learning disabilities program. Um, and that is the only way of getting into the learning disabilities program as well. So a student can't you know, show up in their sophomore year and say, I wanna be part of this program. It's too late. It's an admissions-based program. Um, it starts when it starts and uh, students have one chance to get in. So for the learning disabilities program, we are looking for college ready students. That means students um, who have demonstrated that they can be successful in college. The um, admissions process is a student will apply to Westfield State University. They will send in documentation that demonstrates the student has a learning disability and or ADHD. Um, we prefer to have a copy of an IEP or 504 as well to see what accommodations you've received in the past or modifications. Um, it also helps us determine whether a student is college ready. So if a student has been working with someone in class alongside them the entire time, then whether or not the student is actively using that person will help us determine whether they're college ready. So if you are a student or a parent of a student or a guidance counselor or somebody related to someone who might uh, be eligible for the learning disabilities program, making sure that in college, I mean, in high school, the student starts learning how to be a college student, how to be independent, how to learn independently, how to do their work independently. That is the sort of thing that we are looking for um, when we're reviewing applications for the learning disabilities program, okay? And you can call me or anybody else at any time and say, this is what we do. And I'll say, well, you might wanna stop doing this and start doing something else start you know, giving the student a little bit more autonomy, um, putting more responsibility on the student, those sorts of things. So what we do in the learning disabilities program is when the student gets to us, we work with them to you know, help develop some of those navigational skills through college. Um, we work with them to help create their academic schedule. So we do academic advising for them. In their first and second year, they get early course registration. 
Um, and when we take into account what the learning disability is or what the ADHD is, uh, doing things like making sure they have time between classes to study or to review their information because they have slow processing or uh, they have memory deficits. So they need to you know, really work at learning that information, doing it regularly. We talk with them about those strategies. Um, so we create their course schedule with them. Uh, we work with them once or twice a week. And this is at the student's own volition. So the student, it's, it's an elective program. A student must make the appointment with us uh, and show up, <laughs> which is often a challenge for some students. However, uh, so when they sit down and they work with us every week, once or twice a week, um, or even every other week, we'll, we'll figure out the need as we go along, uh, they're more likely to be successful. They're more likely to be successful because they can share what's going on with us. And when they share what's going on with us, we can tell them whether they're on point or not. Uh, we can, we will know for the most part if they're missing something. We can help them review their assignments, arrange how they're going to study and when they're gonna study and what they're gonna study that week um, and how they're going to do it. So we, we, we get to do that academic advising with the academic strategies and knowing the students disabilities, we can tailor it much more individually towards them. Um, we work with students from when they matriculate, when they start school, during orientation, through when they graduate in their, with their undergraduate degree. Uh, can you tell me um, what services you can offer students who use the disability services program? We did talk a little bit about the um, learning disabilities program, but uh, we use the disability services program versus those who may be in the learning disability or ADHD track. Okay, so uh, actually I'm gonna start with, this addresses a frequent misconception um, that the students who, uh, well, first of all, track is a term that's used in high school and we're so different than high school. Um, students come in, they're expected to be a student like every other student. They come in, they have to meet the same requirements, the academic requirements, they have to have taken the same classes. There are some exemptions out there, um, but few. Uh, so it's not really a track. Okay. Um, so students will, in the admissions-based program, the learning disabilities program, uh, it includes people only who have ADHD and or a learning disability. They might have another disability too. So we have deaf and hard of hearing people in our learning disabilities program. We have people with mental health conditions in our learning disabilities program. Um, so one of the major differences is that with disability services, a student can register at any time, any time in their academic career. Um, a major misconception is if I don't get into the learning disabilities program, I'm not gonna get any accommodations. That is not true, that is false. We must provide accommodations for students under the law. We want to provide accommodations for students so you can be successful. We want successful students. We want students to not have to have that cognitive load of having to read a book when they haven't been able to get the words from the paper into their eyes and into their head. If you need to listen to the book, we want you to do that. We want you to be successful. So let's, let's work at that. And that's for any student. Um, what's different with the disability services program is that students are referred out for those types of services that we do in the, in, in the learning disabilities program. Um, one of the major differences is that a student does not automatically get early course registration. However, they might have a disability for which they need an accommodation of early course registration. Um, another difference would be that one-on-one -on -one sit down with an advisor uh, we would talk with them about finding that other person on campus, but it would not be the access advisor for disability services. So, but, but we have other programs on campus. So TRIO Student Support Services is a fabulous program to apply to if a student has any sort of disability at all. And that would get confirmed through, in our, at our space, we'd get confirmed through disability services. And we tell TRIO Student Support Services, yes, they're eligible for this program because they have a documented disability. Um, so if they have a disability, if they are low income, which is a very 
low bar to so to speak because you have to be receiving financial aid and that then you're considered low income for the trio student support services or your first generation college student and the first generation college student is someone whose parents did not graduate from a four-year with a four-year degree so they might have gone to community college and gotten their associate's degree they're still considered a first generation college student and i strongly recommend that students go get this service what what i often see happening and this might lead on to another question a little bit too but what i often see happening is that students um, who are the first generation or who've been on an IEP or 504 um, and sometimes low income, they're, they're just different issues that come along with that. But I think one of the common ones is that they're not taught how to navigate college, academia. Um, some students with disabilities are. However, often the parents or the teachers are you know, guiding them around the school. This is what you do next. This is what you do. You have this condition, so you must use this accommodation. So they're, they're not really taught how to do this on their own necessarily. Some are. I don't want to have you know, no blanket statements here. It's a general statement. It's something that I, um, I'll ask students about instead of assuming it. So TRIO Student Support Services, great space. You meet with an advisor once a week. They have professional tutors. Um, they have you know, sessions, they work on financial literacy. It's another great program for any student at any university to apply to. Um, it's also free. And the learning disabilities program is also free. And disability services, no one should be paying for any of their accommodations for if they're reasonable accommodations. Um, so students in disability services have access to all the support systems that anybody else on campus has. In addition to TRIO student support services, they can use a tutoring program, they can use the academic strategies, um, they can use a reading and writing center that we have on campus. Uh, there are lots of different supports and it's beneficial that disability services works with the learning disabilities program because we have you know, six, seven people working together who all have long experience with people with disabilities and the types of resources that are helpful and we're able to brainstorm and you know, get support for that one student. You know, I listened to the um, webinar that you did with MIFA and some other um, dis students with disability programs from other colleges. And I was really interested in that. And I was also really interested in, um, you know, you had some good advice, I think, for parents um, whose students might use the center. And I was wondering if you could uh, go over that a little bit. Okay, I, I would say for parents and guardians of students who have disabilities, um, if they have been in the position where they've had to direct everything, where they've had to fight to get the accommodations in the school, um, if they have a student who is not quite so self-motivated, who, or is very distractible, um, we often see this with students who have either ADHD or have um, some sort of mental health condition that will prevent them from getting up out of bed. Uh, in these situations, the, where the parent can be most helpful during the high school years is working with the student to be as independent as possible, is figuring out where those limitations are, is letting go, just like Frozen says, let it go letting go, um, whether it be little by little, or maybe it's just a task. Maybe it's you know setting up some outside or external uh, incentives or boundaries, um, but helping the student develop their own autonomy, helping students become more self-determined so they recognize their desire to do something or they recognize they don't have a desire to sweep the kitchen floor, but they still must do it. You know, so, so how can the student develop the, um, the determination basically to get that done? Where is it gonna come from? And you know, being frank with your student, being frank with your students, sitting down, asking those questions. Um, there is plenty of help out there to figure out how to ask 
in an effective way. So not the right way, but each person is different. What is gonna be more effective? Or maybe you're not the person to sit down and talk with that student about that with your adult child or almost adult child. Um, but recognizing that your child is gonna become an adult soon is really important. Um, thinking about what they're gonna to need to do on their own. Little things like, can you do your own laundry? Can you crack an egg? Can you boil some water? <laughs> can mm -hmm. you cook? Can you clean? Do you know that you have to clean and that somebody else is not gonna do it for you? Um, so if, if you're the type of parent who's just used to you know, picking up after everybody, stop. Tell yourself, stop. And maybe incrementally put that responsibility on your soon to be adult child. As soon as I walk them there, my, my door, they're an adult. And I'm gonna treat and expect that. I'm gonna know they're a young adult <laughs> and I'm gonna you know, treat them that way too and try to help them build. But, um, but parents can help with that at this point. Simple things like sitting down, writing a schedule that is a shared schedule for the family. Um, so you know, don't you dare try to text me during this time Annie, because I am in a meeting every week at this time, don't text me because I feel like I have to respond to you immediately. Same with the student. They often feel like they have to respond to their parents immediately. So setting up boundaries and, and, and structures so that um, there's a routine, there are habits, there are expectations of professionalism even from your soon to be adult child um, because they need to do that in school. It's not, hey, Joe, I slept through class, give me the syllabus. It's dear Professor Smith, I apologize for missing class today. I'm um, wondering if you can help me with this information or where I could find this. Um, so those, those would be some things. For another important thing would be um, making sure that students' documentation is up to date and having them involved in it. So we just, uh, my access advisor just spoke with somebody yesterday or today who's, she, she asked the student directly, the mom was in the picture, in the frame with her. She asked the student directly, so have you read this document, the IEP? Do you, do, you, do you understand what we're talking about here? And the student said, my mother never let me read it. Mm -hmm. And I think parents are often afraid that when a student see something that says deficit or not as good as or needs to improve on this that it is just going to hurt the person but if the student does not know where their limitations are and assumes things then that also could be hurtful so it, i think it's more about coming to an understanding that having some sort of condition which substantially limits a major life activity is normal. Mm. It is normal. Most people have something going on with them. It might be a disability. It might be um, they're homeless. It might be they have other hardships. It, everybody has something going on that that makes them work a little differently and makes them approach life a little differently. Um, a lot of students with learning disabilities are ADHD or other disabilities report that they have something fabulous about themselves because something else doesn't work hmm. or it is, doesn't work as well. Whether it's compensation or whether it's somebody with ADHD who's extremely creative, extremely scattered and so brilliant. It's it, trying to find the positive parts of a person regardless of whether they have a disability or not, is, is what is going to help a student or a person um, just you know, be able to express themselves, be able to succeed academically, um, be able to feel more confident, be able to feel like it's okay to have dreams. Um, and it's okay to know that I might have to alter my dream because I cannot do that because of this. But you know, working with the student to build up their self-confidence, their sense of self, their self-worth is important. But also doing that in recognition of whatever limitations are is also important. Um, you know, telling someone they can be whatever they want to be, that's not true for everybody. I wanted mm. to be a trial lawyer. Oh no, <laughs> I couldn't do that. Um, but I also wanted to work with students who were traditionally excluded from higher education. So I've been able to do that and that is fabulous. Um, 
so yes, those are some of the things. Making sure documentation is up to date. Um, making sure the student is is coming from a, a place of I can do it, but you know, making sure they're realistic about it as well. Uh, I've heard too many students who are in college say, I was told I would never go to college. I was told I would never graduate high school. And there they are going to get their master's. Mm. So not putting a limit, you know, pr pushing what limits others have put on them, just to you know, make sure. Um, having the student, like during the admissions process, let the student do as much as possible, please. Don't press the buttons for them. Sit back maybe every Sunday and Wednesday, you sit down and you talk about the progress that you've made. First Sunday, you're sitting down and writing down a list. You're not writing it, the student is writing down a list of everything that needs to be done. Let the student take charge as much as possible. Create an Excel spreadsheet. If they don't know how to use Excel, we got paper and pen. Right, so start with the student does as much as possible. When you're when they're in college, um, or I, I mean, sorry, between college, high school and college, so the summer, set down the expectations. Uh, FERPA is a privacy tool there to protect the student from people getting their information. So administrators do not tell parents what's going on. And so making sure that you sit down with a student in the summer and say, okay, I am paying for this. And since I'm paying for this, I do expect to get information about your grades. Um, and asking the student, what information do you expect from me? What information do you wanna share with me? So having a discussion and coming to some sort of agreement instead of laying down the law completely is really important. Mm. Um, so yes, that's, there is a carrot and a stick sometimes. Let's try to find the carrot. Try to find the thing that's gonna make them wanna share information with you. Um, and then you will find some students just will not. Mm. And that's, that, that's, no, that's every um, person makes their own determination about that. So you mentioned a, a few moments ago resources uh, for, for parents. Um, so, I wanted to say, thinking of Banacos as a resource, mm -hmm. if anybody out there is listening to this or watching this and they're interested in Westfield State and, and, and Banacos and the, the, the programs that, that you offer, um, how, what should they be doing? What should, what should their next steps be? I would say the fastest way to assure that someone's going to get in touch with you <laughs> is to write an email to either LDP, which stands for Learning Disabilities Program, so LDP, or DS, which is Disability Services, at westfield.ma.edu. So write an email. If you go to our website, all those emails are listed. Um, and there are several people attached to each email, so there, it's the better chance of you getting a faster response. You can also call us up at any time and we'll answer during business hours. Okay. <laughs> call anytime, but we'll answer during business hours. Um, I, really, I encourage my staff to share information. Uh, no proprietariness over any information. Uh, we are fortunate to have enough staff so that you can contact us at any time during the year. There are some offices that need to, you know, minimize the amount of time they're talking with prospective students and families. Uh, so they might say, okay, contest, contact us during winter, come to one of our open houses, um, but it'll be a quick reply, come during these times. Uh, I will say that all the university, the, the Massachusetts State University um, directors, of disability services or accessibility services. That's another way to find a program. Um, they all wanna help their students. You know, they wanna work with students. They want you to be as prepared as possible. They wanna make sure that you're coming in with documentation that the school has done. If you don't have money to go out and get a 3,000 or 6,000 if you're in the Boston area, you know, documentation, evaluation of a learning disability or ADHD to make sure that it gets done in the school system as much as possible. 
And some schools will evaluate for ADHD as well as learning disabilities. Not all, and they're not required to, um, but they must do the learning disability assessment. So making sure that you're as prepared as possible that to, to go into college um, and asking us, what are your requirements? Most of the colleges on their websites can answer the, those questions. So go visit the website. And when you have a question or you want to you know, solidify your understanding of it, call them up. Okay. Um, yeah, just call. Have your guidance counselors call. Have your special education. If they're disagreeing with you about when your person should get tested, have them call and say, what are you looking for at the, high, at the college level? If there's just like this little thing in the back of your head saying, mm, I don't know, just ask. Mm -hmm. especially if you're at a session like this just call up and ask well i can't tell you how much i enjoyed this conversation so thank you very much for being here thank you jonathan so much i enjoy talking about this topic and share, spreading the wealth well, i hope you enjoyed that once again thank you to sarah for sharing your expertise with us and folks, if you like the show, you can subscribe to us wherever you get your shows from. And please remember to rate and review us so we can keep doing what we're doing. Once again, my name is Jonathan Hughes, and this has been the MIFA Podcast. Thanks.